Hey there, guys. All right, today we are back with some more geography now. This time we're on to Djibouti. Uh, we're finally out of the sea countries. Huh. For a while there, it was starting to feel like I was not making any progress in these Geography Now videos because we had just been in the sea countries for so long. Is C the, the, the letter? The, yeah, the letter with the, the most countries in it. It certainly felt like it, but I don't think it is. Is it? No, it has to be. Well, I guess technically you could be because the official name of Mexico is the United States of Mexico, I believe. United States of America. Russia is the Russian Federation. Is there any other United States of something? I feel like there has to be. Just don't know. <sighs> Anyways. Before we dive in, make sure you go check out the links below in the description box and make sure to join the Discord. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and dive right into geography now. Look, I get it. The puns kind of write themselves for this yeah, one. But do. seriously, you'll be mesmerized and want to explore all over once you get a good look at Djibouti. <laughs> the fact that Barbie and I laughed at the same time. Hey everyone, I'm your host. Great minds think alike, Barbie. Great think alike. Barbie, welcome to the place that hopes to become the Dubai of East Africa. Now, those are some strong yeah, claims really? to make. Let's see what's going on in Djibouti. <laughs> <laughs> is he gonna laugh every time? Because I will. Although small, Djibouti is what you would call a geostrategic country. In I'm a child. <laughs> I'm a 23-year-old child. Which the entire domain is wrapped around one of the most economically significant regions on the planet and capitalizes off of it. Djibouti is located on the Horn of Africa, bordered by- Oh yeah, that's where Djibouti is. I don't know why, but I was kind of thinking them a little bit more south than that. Yeah, that was, yeah. By Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia, right across the Gulf of Aden from Yemen on the Arabian Peninsula. Djibouti is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, right at the mouth where the Indian Ocean and Red Sea meet at the Bab al-Mandab Strait. This is what puts Djibouti in such an advantageous geoeconomic position. The country is divided into six regions, and the straightforwardly named capital Djibouti City rests nice. on the coast of the southern eastern tip of the Gulf. Djibouti City, nicknamed the City of Seven Masks, in itself hosts about 70% of the entire country's population. Damn. I mean, if you look at a satellite image at night, it kind of looks like this. The entire country oh. surrounds the Gulf of Tajura, which plays probably the most important lifeline role in the country's makeup. Djibouti lays claim to the uninhabited disputed Dumera and Kalida Islands with Eritrea, and the Ka'a Dabali Islands off the coast of the Obak region, as well as the Il Musha and Maskali Islands right at the entrance of the Tajura Gulf, and also small islands inland like the Il du Diable or Demon Island. It's Ooh. called that way because it's always foggy there, and it's said that the people who go there never quite exactly come back the same. Now here's the thing for Djibouti. It's all about location, location, location. The landscape may be a little harsh and desolate, but if you can build a base here, you have access to an intercontinental network and gateway that opens up a world of opportunity and security. Djibouti hosts a wide range of military contingents from other countries off their land, such as France, Japan, and the only permanent US base in Africa as well. In oh. return, this creates an income stream for the national treasury and allows a somewhat steady economic growth for Djibouti. The country as a whole acts as a major transit hub for refueling and transporting goods coming into the area, especially for Ethiopia, as they can't really use Eritrea much because... Yeah. yeah. In a nutshell, the entire country used to be under French rule as French Somaliland, and then later as the territories of French Afar and Issa until they finally got their independence in 1977. The funny thing is, unlike Somalia and Eritrea, Djibouti has a much higher political stability and general welfare index as they try to stay neutral or uninvolved in international conflict, unless encroached upon. This means that unlike other areas, Djibouti has had some time to actually work on development projects like building a railway to Addis Ababa, Ooh. Ethiopia, or two new airports. Hold on, can we... Let's let's take a look. Look at that rail. That's a nice looking railroad. <laughs> look at that. That's pretty good looking, man. Like I like I like the design here. <laughs> Talking about the design of a railroad. Oh boy. Ethiopia or two new airports. Not everyone will agree, but some Djiboutians believe that with all the escalating new international investment, they're hoping to become the Dubai of the Horn of Africa. And who knows if they will? I mean, they already got on the world radar without oil. Can you imagine what would happen if they discovered oil reserves? I mean, no, no, back up, back up, back up. That was actually kind of fun. Okay, landscape time. Paul so did not have the trigger control. Come on, come on. Finger off the trigger if you're not gonna shoot. Come on. 
Then Djibouti may be small, <laughs> but it definitely doesn't lack in its. I'm a child. Works in land makeup. The country is precariously positioned right near the tri point border between the Somali, Arabian, and African plates that further split down into the East African Rift. This puts Djibouti in a hot seat. Ah. of geothermal locations. Mount Ardukoba being an active volcano that last erupted in 1978. Generally, the land is dry and arid with some, but not a lot of vegetation. Because of fresh water scarcity, the- That looks be that- Ooh. Beautiful. That's like something you film like an epic fantasy movie. Also kind of gives me Dune vibes. It gives me Dune vibes, dude. A little bit. Kind of. Somewhat. Denny Villeneuve, uh, Dune vibe. God, I fucking love that movie. The agriculture sector is kind of limited and restricted with only a few crops like tomatoes and date palms that can be grown, as only about 4% of the land is arable. There are only two permanent aquatic bodies of water in the country, Lake Abe on the border with Ethiopia, and Lake Asal, also known as the lowest point in Africa. However, these two hmm. are salt lakes, Asal being the second saltiest lake in the world after Don Juan Lake in Technically third or fourth, depending on how you measure the other ones. Antarctica, and henceforth, cannot be used for irrigation. But you Aww. know how they do it in Africa. Uh, okay. What do we do now? Let's start selling salt. Yeah! If you visit Djibouti, definitely check this place out. Lake Abe, one of the strangest places on Earth, has an almost lunar landscape with a limestone chimney forest Ooh. that looks like needles going up 50 meters protruding from the ground as the entire area is surrounded by bubbling hot springs. The country only experiences two Beautiful. distinct seasons, the damp, windy season between October and April and the burning wind season between June and August, the hottest part of the year in which temperatures can get past 50 degrees Celsius. Rain is strange. What's that in, 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 in American Eagle temperature? I used to know the fucking... Uh, used to know how to do the math to the different... to chain Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius, but now I can't remember. That's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, isn't it? Range because it doesn't really follow any specific season. It can kind of just come and go whenever it pleases throughout the year. It's kind of like playing the lottery. Who will get rain today? Oh. All right, I won! <laughs> Overall, Djibouti may be a little low on the resource side, but incredibly high on the service side of the economy. Now let's see how that works out. <laughs> Djibouti is kind of like that quiet little kid in class that doesn't really start any problems, but is working on a project that will probably win the science fair and gain attention of every major college. The country has a little over 800,000 people and is dominated oh, by the two main ethnic small, groups, actually. the Issa at around 60% and the Afar at around 35%. The remainder of the country is made up of small groups of Arabs, French, Ethiopians, and even Italian people. Also keep in mind, the military base personnel, although not citizens, do make a noticeable presence in everyday society in Djibouti as well. The Issa people, which can be found more in the southern Southern regions of the country are also sometimes referred to as just Somalians as they are a sub-clan of the Somali people and speak their own dialect of the Somali language. The Afar people, although I also have a thing for swords, so in the Somalians. Connections. Slightly more distinct, have a very similar culture and language that resembles the Issa people. These two groups pretty much get along, and especially since the majority of them share the same religion, Islam. About 93% of the country is Muslim, adhering to the Sunni branch of the Shafti school of jurisprudence legal tradition. The remainder of the country is predominantly Christian. You can even find some churches in Djibouti city. Most are Ethiopian Orthodox. The country is generally tolerant of any religion, but still restricts proselytizing towards Muslims. The official languages of the country are French and Arabic. However, French is sometimes used more as Djibouti was once a French territory, and they didn't even get their independence until 1977 because you know how France is. Okay, yeah. seriously, bro. Every other European country is doing it. Just give it up. No, these are my territories. I'm not letting go. Culture-wise, Djibouti... That was a f accurate representation of France in the late 20th century. Yeah, actually, yeah. No, that's... Good. Europeans are known for being quite peaceful, but very talkative. They will have no problem spending hours bargaining with a vendor or just sitting you down for a casual five-hour chat. Although still classified as a developing country with a high unemployment rate at over 50%, the country has been steadily taking measures to alleviate the problem by instituting a wide range of domestic policies. About a fifth of the national budget goes to education nice. alone, and in the past few years, the GDP rate has increased every year, and today sits at a steady and comfortable 6.5%. Nice. Buildings are popping up fast, and the new and improved 
Djibouti Addis Ababa railway is currently being constructed between them and Ethiopia, costing over $4 billion in foreign investment. Because of the interaction with all the military base personnel, Djiboutians are generally more in the loop when it comes to international affairs. This is also why Djibouti typically holds a very neutral stance when it comes to international drama, although Eritrea knows how to kind of push their buttons. Which brings us to... <laughs> Once again, Djibouti may be small, but everyone seems to be staring at it. No, seriously, though. The position of the country is so advantageous that people from all over the world have kept Djibouti on the radar. Jesus, like, I'm not even trying it. It just comes out. First of all, <laughs> Djibouti hosts military bases for the US, France, and Japan, and is currently in the process of building another base for China. Therefore, by default, these countries kind of have a tight sense of diplomacy with Djibouti and offer a source of aid and revenue. The funny thing is, Russian Cossacks turned to this land way before any Western power back at the end of the 19th century, and they even built an unofficial colony that was eventually driven out partially by the French and partially ended by royal order. To this day, however, hmm. Russia still holds close ties and even some of the streets are named after Russian locations. Somalia is kind of like the embarrassing bigger brother that they kind of feel obligated to love but would rather not get involved with his controversial escapades. Their best friend, however, would have to be Ethiopia. Ethiopia works very well with Djibouti and almost all of their international imports and exports go directly through the port of Djibouti in Djibouti City. Djibouti provides them with sea access and in return, Ethiopia gives them food and electricity. It's a beautiful symbiotic relationship. In conclusion, Djibouti nice. on the surface seems quite dry and desolate, but once you see how they operate their country, you'll kind of start to understand why everyone wants a piece of Djibouti. Ah! Stay tuned, Dominica, yes, that's how you pronounce it, is coming up next. <sighs> All right, that was Geography Now Djibouti. Um, this is a pretty good episode, actually. This was really well paced. Uh, for such a small country, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, don't really got much else to add here at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.